Whack if you want to be respected there. by the wine community, I definitely don't Riesling. I don't yeah. care what the wine community <laughs> yeah. says about yeah. me, Brendan. Well, I think that's one like, thing that's apparent on these yeah. videos. <laughs> Righty. Um, welcome to a new segment on the channel, Wine for the People. Uh, this time we're going to do a little bit of wine 01 so basically it might have come to your attention if you've watched a few of the videos that these guys know a little bit more about uh wine making wine tasting and the whole industry than i do i've got some questions that i want to get answered so the next time we're doing the reveals of blind wines i'm not sitting in the background being like oh, what um <laughs> so this week we're just going to talk about some really basic stuff to do with white wine. Um, white wine, I think for me, it, I've I don't know if this is going to come across as being a generalist, but for me, white wine was always my mum's drink, and red wine was always my dad's drink. So I associate it quite often with uh, middle-aged women. I associate it with sort of acidity and tartness. I think of it as a summer thing as opposed to a winter thing. Okay, are those? Am I being, uh, am I casting too broad of a blanket over a big world of things here? Is it, yes. can men yes. drink white wine? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Massive. Ab absolutely. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the first part, very heteronormative of you, not very progressive. <laughs> not progressive. But I, no. I can understand but why, I get why it. Yeah, there's a stereotype. The stereotype's inherently incorrect. Uh, and play, many places, all through Burgundy, all through Germany, uh, would uh, ve vehemently disagree with you. Mm. Um, you know, so I, outside, it's not so much wine, wine itself is it doesn't have a gender or an agenda either. Um, it's just wine. Um, but yeah, acid. Hey, there's, there's that's, wines with acid and without acid. Yeah, we're currently drinking a white wine with plenty of acid. That's a nice little prickly little tongue dancing it's acidity. It's electricity. It's sort of yeah, quite, quite electric. Yeah. yeah. Um, does that is that the choice of having more acidity a white wine making thing or is it picking earlier or is it just naturally more occurring it's in just, white grapes? No, nah, it's, it's it's just wine to be yeah. honest. Like because there's plenty of grape varieties, white grape varieties that don't have acid. Okay. And all you're gonna do is go through most of sherry to like in Spain to figure that one out. Yeah. Um so simple yeah, stuff if you've got some time just hop over <laughs> to Spain if you want to learn the so, basics of white wine. But there is, I think you highlight the the main problem here is that there is a stereotype. It's yeah. it's uh, not factual, it is incorrect. It's anecdotal. Uh, it's anecdotal. In in my case. Absolutely and, Absolutely. and you know, you're either pro or you know a for or against it kind of doesn't matter it's just it is what it is sure um, and it's individual preference now run so we're talking about there's some that do have acid some that don't have acid sort of give me uh throw three different white wine varietals at me and tell me why they're different or like what's what so you know like i've heard of chardonnay let's start with chardonnay yep yep where does that sit in the world of white wine Probably more on the uh, fuller body spectrum, particularly talking about regions like Burgundy where it's, uh, you know, home to. Um, use of a lot of oak. Mm -hmm. So that impacts the body, the texture, the, you know, the weight of it all um, in comparison to something like, uh, you know, Riesling, probably a good, another another point there. That isn't used with too much oak because it has a lighter body. So when you're saying used with a lot of oak, that is time spent in barrels? Yep. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So Chardonnay awesome. really lends itself really well to this. So we we yeah. know Chardonnay is a bit of like a winemaker's grape. It really loves to, it's what we call very forgiving. So sometimes you can add a little bit of oak to a wine and it overpowers it, right? It's too much. And I think that's what happened to Chardonnay in the 90s out of Australia. We mm -hmm. sort of went a bit too hard Okay. Uh, and made these wines that were so overblown and overpowered and that alienated people. But Chardonnay does look really good with a little bit of like a deft hand uh, of oak. It also can, Chardonnay is one of those rare ones, it can have a lot of acidity. Heaps. Uh, Chablis. You know, like champagne. one of, yeah, champagne, of course, even yeah. more so. Yeah. So it is, Chardonnay is one of those uh, almost global grape varieties these days um, that is showcasing that. My main connection to Chardonnay comes from the Australian show, Kath and Kim. Yeah. And they were. Cardinet? Yeah. yeah. Cardinet. And then. Chateau Cardboard. Yeah. Chateau <laughs> de Cardboard. And then also. Um, you know, I, I know of people who are an ABC sort of white wine drinker, which is anything but Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. Is that the legacy of what you're talking about, 90s yeah. Australian yeah. Chardonnays being over oak? Every single popular grape variety, let's say we'll call them the big three, mm -hmm. uh, at least in, in Australia anyway, or New World countries, Sauvignon Blanc, Riesling and Chardonnay. Every single time one of these grape varieties becomes popular, they tend to be overdone. So Riesling, Riesling predated Chardonnay. So Riesling was very, very popular in the 60s and 70s here. Uh, it, we decided to go down a sweet path 
with yep. it. Made it very, very sweet. It was also called Hock. Back in the day, we didn't really have naming conventions. We really borrowed from European naming conventions. And that, of course, alienated people. It was overdone and it was super popular. Moved on to Chardonnay in the 80s and 90s. Uh, did the same sort of thing there. Then we've recently moved on to Sauvignon Blanc. And it's become, uh, you know, very one-dimensional, very approachable in that manner. But it's been overdone. Well, so people I, have moved on. I really like that word approachable when we come to talking about wine because it is certainly something mm. that when you're starting out drinking wine, uh, you can get put off by having something mm. that maybe... Like, for example, I for a really long time thought I didn't like red wine at all just because the mm. only red wines I was drinking were uh, just these really big, heavy sort yeah. of like... Uh, yeah. Meal in a glass. Yeah, like yeah. like try, it'd be like I feel like it would be trying to come to drinking beer and starting out with like really hectic stout. Southern stout, stout yeah, yeah. Southern stout. like some weird <laughs> yeah. like sour beer. You yeah, know, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. So when you're talking about white wines, if I'm someone who you know I usually go out drink beers or vodka sodas or something mm. like that, but I want to get into drinking wine because I think it'll look a little bit better on my Instagram. Um, what should I be looking to try and jump into that's not going to take me, like, that's not going to whack If you want to be respected there. by the wine community, I definitely don't, Riesling. I don't yeah. care what the wine community <laughs> yeah. says about yeah. me, Brendan. Well, I think that's one like, thing that's apparent on these videos. <laughs> Here's the thing. Sauvignon Blanc can be like a very contentious grape. A lot of people just like, they just hate Sauvignon Blanc, which is one of my least favorite things because it can be made really deliciously. Um, Chardonnay is one of those ones where the more money you spend, the better it is. Like right. if you buy a twenty dollar bottle of Chardonnay, it, the high likelihood is you're going to be disappointed. Yep. You spend thirty bucks, you'll be happier. Forty yep. bucks, and incrementally, the more you spend, the and better it's like going to be. Band, there is like a, a band of value when it comes yep. to Chardonnay, and that typically because it is a little bit more costly pro to produce very very well. Yeah, mm. you've got to be a little bit more attentive in the vineyards, and you've got to be able to throw some money at oak. Oak is very expensive. Mm -hmm. But that sort of like we've seen that forty to fifty dollar price that's range. The, that's really the perfect bracket for Chardonnay is like an entry level yeah. to really good stuff. Yeah. Um, but also, if you're twenty years old going to university, you're not going to spend fifty bucks on a bottle of Chardonnay, mm -hmm. especially if you don't know it. Not at all. Um, so the best value for money white grape variety has to be Riesling. Okay. You, yeah. Honestly, if you go to any BWS, you get a bottle of Jim Barry for seventeen dollars. It's pretty good. That's said we're lucky. In we Australia, are lucky in Australia. In Australia we're lucky. Because Riesling from Germany has to be one of the most like exorbitantly <sighs> priced things sir. at the moment and hard to access. In, at least in the, little at least made. in this country. And in this country as well. Well, yeah. that being said, I went to the Ed Sellers yesterday, and there's a whole wall of JJ Prom, and it's like this must be must be <laughs> must be nice. Um, <laughs> but basically, yeah, my, my, always a good starting point, particularly here in Australia, is go to Riesling. Um, I don't know what, what you would do in America. What would you leap in for the over States, there? They do have access to really good Riesling over there at pretty good price points. Finger Lakes, yeah, of course. Um, they do have access to Austria as well as Alsace. Um, I mean, if you're in America, you're probably going to be 21 by the time you're drinking it, so go for a nice bottle of Chardonnay. Get your life together. Maybe have a job by then, hopefully. In fact, they have really good Chardonnay. There. And then, they do have access oh. to some very good Chardonnay at really good price points. Yeah. So, in summary... Chardonnay, it's sound, this is my takeaway from what we just discussed. So started. general Here white go, wine. General the world according to Henry. My takeaway from this is that Chardonnay is sort of your more uh, more involved, more more flavours going through it, potentially a bit heavier. That oak that you're talking about, it is, I don't know, in my head, it's almost like the Shiraz of whites. Sort of. Sort of, it's yeah. It's, it's very yeah, seductive. Yeah, it can yeah. be that or it can be like high quality champagne. Cool. Yeah. Pinot Gris, what were we talking about? Or Sav Blanc? We were talking Blanc. about Sauvignon, Sauvignon Blanc, Blanc mostly, yeah. So, so Sauvignon Blanc sounds like it is a real uh, sort of lower end of the winemaking world uh, in sense. In some places. In some in places. Some places yeah. Yeah. It's something that you can jump into, spend not a lot of money on. Is it worth spending more money on it? Yes. Yes, absolutely more so. It's yeah. like, it's the opposite of Chardonnay where like in the middle, there's this like perfect gulf of quality. Um, it's the opposite of um, Sauvignon Blanc. So you want to spend twenty bucks or a hundred bucks? Yeah. Cool. So if you're if you're a really uh, if you if you're like a massive Chardonnay drinker, you're probably going to be a big fan of Pouilly Fumé. And if you're a really if you're a fan of trying to like up the ante on on New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, you'd be a fantastic fan of of something like Sancerre. Mm -hmm. um, so these are two sort of areas inside the Loire Valley that's famous for making Sauvignon Blanc, the the sort of traditional home of. Sauvignon Blanc um, that really elevate that status and you know a lot of care and attention goes into it. You're gonna pay a little bit more for it, absolutely, mm -hmm. but not dissimilar to what you would pay for Chardonnay and great quality Chardonnay. But if you're looking for an entry level wine, it seems like Riesling in Australia at least. In Australia, is a great we are lucky here. Australian mm. uh, Riesling is is utterly incredible value, incredible value. 
And that can and you said that uh, Riesling in Australia has been steered in more of a sweeter direction. Is it, that started. it started. It was uh, quite a while ago. I would say um, you have a pretty much a ninety nine point nine percent chance if you were buying Riesling in Australia, you're probably buying it bone dry. Yeah, like bone dry, hardly acidic. Like you know, bone dry. So okay, good. So if I want an acidic wine to jump into, get a Riesling. What if I wanted a sweeter white to jump into? What's a good because sweet, I think for people who don't drink wine, it can be a bit challenging just having that really tart. Look, I, I probably wouldn't even gravitate towards sweetness. I think I think sweetness and fruit ripeness and fruitiness are, mm -hmm. are all really distinct things in the world of wine. Sweetness for us as technical winemakers and stuff, we, we actually look specifically for sugar sweetness. Right. And then you start opening up a whole different spectrum. You start looking at things like fortified, uh, botrytized wines. Uh, you start looking at... But if we're talking about... What I think you're talking about. Grape is, juice. Yeah. So I think really you'd be looking at the Pinot Gris, the Fianos, what mm -hmm. we would term textural. I think everyone on planet Earth would probably think is just a little bit sweeter. Yeah. They're a little bit denser, low, lower acidity. Quite often that's the thing. People want lower acid. They don't want more sweetness. Yeah. But those two things are quite opposing. Yeah. And th I think that through some of the tastings we've had, uh, just some some white wines that are really surprising are the really clean tasting white. Like yep. there's yep. not what you're talking about there with low acidity, but also it's not super sweet. You haven't, it doesn't feel like you have to chew on yeah. it or anything like that. It's just yeah. this really clean, mineralistic. Yeah. We, say this, the, we say, we talk about the, the concept of smashability or crushability mm. or yeah, drinkability. Yeah. With a white wine, uh, the idea, irrespective of, of how acidic it is, there's nothing standing in the way between the wine hitting your lips and actually being swallowed. <laughs> and so those wines where they are, we call them Goldilocks wines, medium body, medium acid, medium texture, medium acidity, like the Just whole right. thing is. And they, they, they are so easy to consume. Cool. And that's where Pinot Gris really sits off Fiano. So, in summary, buy yourself a bottle of $40 Chardonnay. Yeah. Well, how about this? How about we recommend three wines out of the three grape varieties that we've um, yep. listed? And cool. that you, like, if you ha haven't had any of these wines before, you should go check out. Uh, but this would probably be best for Australian viewers. Mm -hmm. um, so, for something like Riesling, I would recommend just going and buying a bottle of Jim Barry at, at, at the bottle yeah. shop. It's probably $18. Yeah, quality. Not expensive at all. Not expensive at all. You can get it pretty much yeah. everywhere, um, and it's always in supply. Really good. Uh, something like Chardonnay, I would recommend going to Murdoch. some Murdoch Hill. Exactly what I was thinking. Murdoch. Uh, you probably get that entry level for around about thirty dollars. Totally worth it. But Murdoch then you Hill, can Chardonnay. Murdoch, Murdoch Hill, Hill Chardonnay, it's about yeah. thirty bucks, and then you can level up, and he'll have his mid tier, which is about forty five fifty, mm -hmm. and then his top tier is like eighty bucks. Yeah. And all, uh, it's, if you get all three, you'll see the levels you can kind of grow what about, in what Chardonnay. About Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, interesting. Because um, Sauvignon, Sauvignon Blanc is actually a really interesting one because a lot of people have moved away from, I think in in South Australia, particularly Shaw and Smith, Sauvignon Blanc yep. is known for being Icon. the, yeah, the iconic one. Um, but there have been historic, you know, examples of Sauvignon Blanc that have been made in, in Australia, that South Australia in particular. Oh, we had one. Of, we had that um, Dog Point uh, Fumé Blanc Marlborough. Yeah, yeah, New uh, Zealand. A uh, blind taste, which is really good. Aged, and we all actually really enjoyed it. Mm. It was actually uh, so. Was that was the Dog Point. Sauvignon, uh, Sauvignon Blanc. Section, no, it was section 94, Sauvignon Blanc. 43, something like that. I had, it had a four in it. Yeah, it was fantastic. It was really, really fantastic. Cool. Next level. Well, I think what we'll do is we'll have a link to each of those wines in, in the, the description ding, ding, ding. down there. Yeah. Um, so we've got a Jim Barry Riesling, a Murdoch Hill Chardonnay, and a Dog Point Section 94-ish, maybe. Section, section something. Se yeah. section, section something. Yeah, it's Sauvignon it's. All right, cool. Well, I... I actually found that kind of useful. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't care if we're filming it or not. I'm just now learning a couple of things, which is great. Uh, we'll be back next time. We'll do some red wines, we'll do some fortifiers, we'll do a whole pile of stuff here. Essentially, I'm just going to learn about wine and you guys can come along with us. Um, so, Henry, Noah, Brendan, signing off. Ciao.